Your finished dismiss removed. Up yours. Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by. This time I'm coming at you to simply just do a Blu-ray review. I'm coming at you to do a Blu-ray review of the recently released Blu-ray by, um, I got covering it up there, by Severin on Blu-ray. This was just recently came out this spring, not too long ago. The most recent Blu-ray release of the motion picture from, is it 1976? By the name of Grizzly. I'm a big fan of this movie. But for some reason, I never ended up getting the other two Blu-ray releases in North America that came out of this. And I regretted it and almost, in years past, almost paid upwards of $30, $40 for, you know, one of the out-of-print Blu-rays, but never did. Because I don't watch it a hell of a lot. Like, if I watch it, I, it's, I, I only really need to watch it once a year. But I might watch it a little more often now that I got this Blu-ray release of it. But every time I watch it, I'm like, God, do I really need the Blu-ray of it because, you know, I did a review of the movie years ago and I showcased the DVD that I got in there on that review and the DVD, you know, DVD obviously widescreen gets the job done so every time I used to watch that to get my Grizzly fix I was always like, God, I don't, do I really really even need to the Blu-ray and definitely do I need to, do I really want to spend that much to get the out-of-print Blu-ray? I'm glad I didn't because this is probably from, you know, the reviews I see on blue-ray.com and elsewhere, this might be the best Blu-ray release quality-wise of this film thus far. What I really like about the release is, unlike previous Blu-ray Blu releases, I think other ones have 5.1 mixes and stuff that obviously I can't comment on because I've never had those releases, but this release doesn't even bother with that. It's just got, like, original mono, which I really respect. You know, in a perfect world, I just, that's how I'd have Blu-ray releases of old movies. You just don't even, don't even bother going, with trying with 5.1 remixes. Just, the movie was originally put out in mono in the 70s, so put out the Blu-ray in mono. It's very simple in my opinion. I understand, you know, that people with, you know, home theater setups and aficionados like myself, I mean, I've got that kind of, I've got a 5.1 setup. I understand, you know, the, the, the urge to, you know, you try to jazz thing up, things up for, movies so people can use their home audio systems, but that's what, you know, the more crappy new movies are for, is to, to really show off your home audio system. This movie was made in the 70s, a low-budget movie, and it came out in mono, so it should only exist in mono. That's just my opinion. Um, but when this, this title was announced, there was no doubt in my mind that obviously I was going to get this. I think it's the third time in North America that this particular title has come out on Blu-ray and actually compared to all the covers on the other two Blu-rays that were featured I actually like this one the best. I don't know if this is newly commissioned artwork for this release. I can't remember ever seeing this artwork before this release was announced but I absolutely love this artwork because it's the painting kind of artwork and it showcases all the like the highlights. You've, you've got it obviously the, the main uh, character there is the, the the ravenous raging mad grizzly but you've got all these really cool you know highlights like him knocking the you know the the, the little lookout tower down and the, the chick bathing in the waterfall and him attacking the the mother of the child and the, that close-up of that camper girl screaming uh, uh, even though he doesn't attack the bear in the movie, he's attacking, or I mean, attack the chopper in the movies, the bear's attacking the chopper. I mean, I guess he kind of walks up to the point where he's going to attack the chopper, but you've got Christopher George shooting the bazooka, you've got the three guys there, and Christopher George leading the way, you've got a shot of the cool convertible truck with all three of them in there, which I don't think, oh, no, they are in the, the truck all at once at one point, but... You know, I don't, think, I don't think he has a bazooka over his shoulder, but I absolutely love this artwork. And like I say, I don't know if it's newly commissioned for this release or not. Either way, I really love this artwork. On the back here, special features are Nightmare USA author Stephen Thrower on the career of William Girdler. Then you've got Making Movies with Girdler, audio interview with business partner and friend, accompanied by his personal collection of stills, posters, and newly scanned 8mm home movies, The Towering Fury interview with actor. That was actually cool. There's a lot of recently recorded interviews for this, which I was surprised about. I thought it'd be all old stuff that already existed, but this interview with the actor, Tom, whatever the hell his last name is, was cool. He's the guy who played the, the younger guy who was had a thing with... Uh, 
you know, the blonde who ends up dying in the waterfall, that guy kind of recounting his experience on the production was cool to see an interview from him. The Grizzly Details interview with producer David Sheldon and actress Joan McCall. I'm pretty sure the DVD that I got, which is a, a Media Blaster Shriek show release, I want to say that has a commentary that also includes Joan McCall on it. Don't quote me on that, but it's possible. Looks like there's an audio commentary with Mondo Digital's Nathaniel Thompson and film writer Troy Haworth. Movie making in the wilderness, vintage making of, which was really kind of fun. Jaws with Claws archival featurette, radio spots and trailers. Definitely glad to finally have a Blu-ray of Grizzly in my possession. It was definitely a lot sharper and crisper in more detail than I ever really thought it could be. One of my complaints, I guess, about the transfer is that there isn't a whole hell of a lot of grain, but maybe there's not, maybe movies that are filmed in this ratio or maybe movies that are filmed on some kind of different film stock don't have a lot of grain to begin with. Who the hell knows? I, I found it to be, you know, I'm a big grain guy, so in a movie, especially from the 70s, is kind of low on grain. I'm just like, eh, is that because it was, you know, tried to be artific artificially reduced, you know, in the scan, or is it just that's just the way the print is? Who the hell knows? One thing that's re weird about Grizzly ever since day one, when I first saw it, I'm going to do a showcase. I'm pretty sure I showcased my uh, media VHS when I did the review of the actual movie years ago, but I'll probably do a separate showcasing of that in, in the days and weeks coming up. But that was the first time I ever saw this movie. I think in 2002 I came across the, the media VHS version used for like two or three dollars or something like that. So that was the first time I ever saw it. But even on that scan and every subsequent, well I guess this is only the third different scan I've seen it on because I got it the original tape and then that uh, Shriek Show DVD and then now this Blu-ray, but every single presentation has the same effect and it must just be something in inherent with the, the film and or the equipment they use to film it, but it has this weird, you know, when, when people move and stuff, this weird strobe thing, almost like it's not even, you know, the full, you know, 24 frames a second, almost like it was filmed at 12 frames a second or something like that. The, the movie's always had a weird thing to, you know, movement with actors and just movement in general, like it's not even 24 frames a second, like it's just half that or 20 frames a second or something weird. Unfortunately, that's something that I think is just going to be how Grizzly is. I mean, obviously, this is the third scan of it I've ever seen, and it's the same way in all three versions. That's just the way it's going to be, so we, I guess we accept that at that point. But I guess it's kind of, I guess we can think of it as kind of a charm, charm of the film. I really want to stress how sharp, you know, I'm just I'm just used to standard definition versions of Grizzly VHS and then DVD. I just really want to stress how sharp, you know, the Blu-ray is compared to all the versions I've seen before. It's it's really a treat to see and uh, the sharpness and the clarity of stuff and, you know, when you see like metal stuff and it's just how shiny and shimmery it is. It's definitely a really a treat finally to own this movie in this kind of quality. What, what I love about the scan though even though there might not be a lot of grain, but once again, maybe there wasn't ever a lot of grain to begin with. What I love about the scan is it, it, it really kind of has, you know how I talk about if you've seen some of my reviews of other, you know, releases and stuff, like if they've got specs and artifacts and stuff, how it really kind of gives it that midnight screening or quote-unquote grindhouse feel to it. This, this, is, this walks the perfect line between like a really nice clean scan and also one having a decent amount but not an overabundance of like artifacts and this and that. Obviously when you approach, you know, you, you approach real changes and stuff like that, there's a little more going on in the artifacts department and stuff. I think this movie just has, you know, the perfect amount of just like artifacts and stuff on the film that they left on. I really hate when they like want to get rid of every single speck because for me, especially a movie from the 70s, I mean I really, as I've said before in so many of these Blu-ray reviews of older movies from the 70s and the 80s and stuff, I actually love it when you've got a kind of a more rough and tumble print that they put on Blu-ray all full of all kinds of artifacts and elements. As a matter of fact, the you know the scan that they put on that DVD that I got and pretty sure I talked about in my review of Rituals was kind of like an archival print from the producer and stars Lawrence Dane's own collection or whatever. It's like the own, the best print survivable or, or, or surviving that anyone knows about. You know, that kind of thing where maybe that, you know, when you, maybe that's a little rough when you're actually miss, missing bits and pieces of the film, but I don't think anything like that is in this situation. But I'm just trying to say that 
I prefer uh, a scan, even if it's like 2K or 4K. I prefer uh, a scan if it's got like some of that film elements and some of that rough and tumble stuff, and especially in particular uh, as real changes approach and stuff like that, that really just gives the movie a uh, feel of film and just reminds the viewer that it's on film. And as is so often the case with a release like this, you've got the option for this particular cover art or this cover art, which of course is the original theatrical poster kind of cover art. And you'd think that, you know, normally when there's newly commissioned cover art and original theatrical poster cover art, I always tend to go with the original theatrical poster. But in this case, you know, I want to say that if that cover art that, that I first showed you is newly commissioned or not, either way, I kind of like that poster art even more than the original poster art, which is, it's rare, but it does happen. This artwork obviously represents the movie the way it was marketed when it came out in theaters in 1976, and I'm glad to have it as an option on this particular release. But in this case, as I said, I actually prefer this cover art. I think that somehow, it, it, whether it's newly commissioned or not, somehow, if it is newly commissioned, somehow I think it captures the 70s, you know, 70s poster art even better than the actual poster that it was made for it in the 70s. I really, really love this particular poster art. And the Blu-ray itself for this release looks like that. I actually also digging the black Blu-ray case for this particular release. Definitely glad I picked up this recent Blu-ray release of Grizzly, Third Time's a Charm in this case, I guess. Also, the same day this one came out, Severin put out a new Blu-ray release of Day of the Animals. I'm a fan of that movie as well, but I think I'm going to wait and see if the price on that one comes down before I bite on that as I paid up, you know, close to $30 for this release because I just didn't want to wait and miss out on the possibility of, of getting the third North American Blu-ray release of Grizzly as well. So if I can end up getting Day of the Animals for closer to somewhere around $20 or something, expect a review from me on that release as well. I guess that pretty much does it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always we'll catch you on the next video.